gathering in Christ, sharing His love, and we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We're glad that you've joined us here at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida for this, our fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. We pray that you will be inspired by your time with us and that you will call someone after the service uh, to share that inspiration and the love you have received from God through your worship with us. Please join us this Tuesday, March the 23rd at 2 p.m. for our drive-in communion in our parking lot. You can partake of the sacrament and worship with your friends uh, in the safety and comfort of your own vehicle. If you need a ride, please call the church office. Our congregation council is now in conversation with a prospective pastoral candidate as they go through the interview process. Please keep them in your prayers. Members, please plan to join us for Zoom virtual coffee hour every Sunday at 11 a.m. The link to that uh, Zoom conference is in your email. Worship will continue online for the foreseeable future. Please, please pray for an end to this pandemic and that the vaccines that everyone is getting will work. Now please join us as the font, as together we confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. The first lesson for the fifth Sunday in Lent is found in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. And Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. John Wayne, the Duke, has been credited with saying, Never say sorry, it's a sign of weakness. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that at the risk of offending many generations of moviegoers, it's okay to say you're sorry. When you hurt someone, hurt their feelings or their body, or if you've gotten into someone's way or if you've lied, yes, saying sorry is a sign of weakness to some, but it's a way of life for us Christians. Saying sorry is at the root of our confession. How else can we approach the throne of the Almighty without first saying that we're sorry for all of our sins? How else can we receive the sacrament without first acknowledging our unfaithfulness towards God and towards each other, sharing God's peace with them, and then receiving forgiveness? Saying sorry is something that separates us from the animals. In nature, it's survival of the fittest, eat or be eaten. Mark your territory. Be the strongest, the loudest, the biggest. Jesus Christ was the strongest, the biggest, the most powerful. He was God. But the Bible said that out of his great love for us, he gave up all of his power to save us. He opened himself up to the needs of the world, and he opened himself up to the will of the Father, and he became vulnerable. Now, what does it mean to be vulnerable in the world of wild nature? I feel very qualified to answer that because I watch all kinds of nature documentaries. It means that you're very young, you're very old, you're sick or you're wounded, or you've wandered outside the safe confines of the herd. You have no protection against predators or the elements. Likewise, what does it mean to be vulnerable when you're a human being? Well, you're very young, you're very old, you're sick or wounded, or you've wandered outside the safe confines of your own comfort zone or the safety of the people who love you. You have no protection against predators or the elements. Now, if you've ever thought that you were vulnerable, here's a story that I think will make you think again. At 3.30 p.m. on June 6, 2007, a 21-year-old man with muscular dis dystrophy named Ben Carter drove his electric-powered wheelchair down the sidewalk in Pawpaw, Michigan, 
as he approached the street crossing at the corner of Red Arrow Highway and Hazen Street, just in case any of you have ever been in Paw Paw, Michigan, a semi-truck came to a halt at the stoplight. Ben began to cross the street in his wheelchair just a few feet in front of that semi. When the light turned green, somehow the driver of the truck didn't see Ben in his wheelchair. With Ben still in front of the truck, the engine roared to life and the mammoth vehicle pulled forward. When the truck struck Ben's wheelchair, the wheelchair turned, now facing forward, and the handles in the back of the wheelchair became wedged in the truck's grill. The wheelchair kept rolling, though, and Ben, luckily wearing a seat belt, was held in his chair. The truck driver was still oblivious to the fact that he had hit the wheelchair and the truck continued to pick up speed, reaching about 50 miles an hour. Still, the wheelchair and Ben were pinned dangerously in front of the truck. As you can imagine, uh, the truck driver was still in his own little world, not being able to see Ben, but people along the road saw what was happening. Everyone seemed to see the drama that was unfolding, but the driver. Frantic observers called 911. People waved their arms and tried to get the driver's attention. Two off-duty policemen saw what was happening and began to pursue the truck. But on drove the trucker. On the road behind the truck were two new parallel lines that marked where the wheelchair's rubber wheels were being worn off. Finally, after two terrifying miles, the driver pulled into a trucking company parking lot still clueless to the presence of Ben Carpenter pinned to the front of his truck. Thankfully, Ben was unharmed. Ben had only his seatbelt between him and certain death. Now we Christians are a lot luckier than Ben because we have much more between us and certain death. This is where Jesus comes in. Because Jesus offered himself as the dying grain of wheat. We don't have to worry about becoming vulnerable. We can be vulnerable all we want to, and we know that we will be taken care of. In the Christian church, we've always tried to emphasize the communion of all believers. In this community, we are surrounded when we are vulnerable. When we follow Jesus' example of dying to ourselves, when our hard outer shell is torn away, we have the shell of Jesus Christ surrounding us individually and collectively. We also receive the extra comfort of knowing that the community, our family of faith, together with all believers, forms an impenetrable shell around us so that we get the care, the nurture, and the love that we so need. Jesus used the illustration of a grain of wheat being planted in the ground, being buried there. For Jesus, planting seeds is what it means to be faithful. We know that a seed consists of a protective seed coat, some kind of storage tissue with nutrient reserves inside, and a dormant plant embryo. We further know that under the correct conditions, the dormant embryo can be awakened to germinate and grow into a mature plant. So at some point, the seed is turned on and it begins to sprout. In time, what was once a single seed is transformed into a flower, a fruit, a grain, a tree. As I read through the scripture for this morning, I, I read through Eugene Peterson's interpretation of the Bible called the message it reads this way Jesus said listen carefully unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground dead to the world it's never any more than a grain of wheat but if it is buried it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over in the same way anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in love, you'll have it forever real and eternal. 
A good example of trying to hang on to your life as you know it can be seen in the movie Mr. Holland's Opus that starred Richard Dreyfuss. It's about the difficulties a man experiences when he struggles with adapting to the life he has instead of the one he wanted. Holland dreamed of being a composer, but then a baby came along with all of the responsibilities of raising a child and the expenses that accompanied that. So he found a job teaching music, but in his spare time he would compose music. Throughout the story, his teaching responsibilities forced him to make a choice between the students and writing his dream symphony. And while it looked like the students kept winning over the symphony, still his life was a composer's life as the independent composer slowly dies to the teacher who composes. In the end, the much fruit that he bore became clear after many long years of touching young lives with his gifts. His opus was not the music marked on a sheet of paper, but a brilliant symphony composed of the individual lives that he encouraged and nurtured through his teaching. In dying to the life that he wished he had, he gained new life through his students. And is this not what Jesus was talking about? When a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it surrenders to new life and bears much fruit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thunder, 
with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, especially Jan, Jane, Lyle, Nordy, Edith, Gail, Evelyn, Bob, and those we name before you now on our lips or in our hearts. Those who are dying and all who grieve, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those who might be watching this video with you. And please, after the service, call someone on the phone to share that peace with them. At this time, we would normally take up our offering, but we're not in normal times, not yet. Uh, but we do thank those who have continued to support our ministry with their tithes and offerings sent into the office or given through the portal on our website. For those who have been impacted negatively by the coronavirus in any way, we continue to keep you all in our prayers. for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing to others. 
in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Here we go. <laughs> what a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Even you, Chris. <laughs> we are gathering in Christ, sharing His love, and we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. Here we are on the Tuesday before our fifth Sunday in Lent. We're coming down to the last couple Sundays in Lent. We'll have uh, the fifth Sunday in Lent this coming Sunday, and we'll have Palm Sunday the Sunday after that. And then uh, we have Holy Week, and know that Holy Week services and Easter services will be held right here in the parking lot. We have Monday, Thursday, uh, on Thursday, the April, April the 1st, here at 2 o'clock, same thing the next day, we'll have 
Good Friday service at 2 o'clock on Friday, April the 2nd, and then on Sunday, April the 4th, is the day of the blessed resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we will gather in this parking lot, and I will start saying good prayers to God for good weather for that day, so that we can gather together and really, truly praise God and say Alleluia. So, uh, please, uh, as we do every week, please keep your windows rolled up during the service, and uh, your air conditioner on you definitely need it today uh, if you're going to get out of your car please have a mask a cloth mask that covers your nose mouth and chin and try to stay six feet apart from each other and uh, if you haven't already done so please uh, take your communion elements right now and take them out of the wrapping so that by the time we say the Lord's Prayer and after that at my direction we can all partake of the Blessed Sacrament together and now let us confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before we get into the Gospel reading and the sermon, I'm reminded that I missed a very important announcement. The blue SUV down at the bottom of our parking lot right now has many, many sets of uh, quilt tops that need to be sewn together. So if you can sew, please go down and relieve Leon Godding of some of the material that she has in the back of her SUV and she will be very happy. Uh, she just figured that they weren't doing too much good sitting up here in the sewing room. So if you can sew, and you can sew some quilt tops for our ladies, please go down and see Leon after the service. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to see Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. 
I have glorified it, and it will I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our Gospel lesson, we've just heard Jesus speaking once again about the necessity of his death. All during his time with the disciples, he spoke openly about the fact that he was going to Jerusalem to accomplish his Father's will and that he was to die to descend to the dead so that the devil might be defeated and rise again so that all who believe in his name might also be raised from the dead. Jesus must die. As harsh as that statement is, it's true. We are Easter people and we are blessed by God through the death and resurrection of his only Son. How often have we ever thought about that statement, Jesus must die, and what it means for our faith? Now to explain the necessity for his death, Jesus points to an example from nature. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. So the death of that grain of wheat is crucial, it's necessary. It is of utmost importance for that grain to die in order that it might be raised up once again to bear much fruit. In death, there is new life. Now Jesus has just spent the last three years with his disciples, preaching and teaching, touching people and healing them, carrying out his ministry to the people of that region. But now that Jesus and his disciples are in Jerusalem for the very last time, there is a much more urgent need for the gospel to be proclaimed throughout the world. Jesus, like that grain of wheat, cannot continue his ministry to just those around him. He is limited by his own physical body. He is just one grain of wheat one single person and he must find a way to reach out to the whole world and the way Jesus does that is to submit to his death to give up all of the human limitations that he had and through his death there will come a release of power that the world still has yet to understand Jesus' death will clear the way for the word of, the, of God to be spread around the world in this manner and only through his death will his Father in heaven be glorified. Jesus must die. His disciples were troubled by this news and we are saddened that our Savior had to die for our sins. But we rejoice that in God's wisdom he used death to conquer death, and through death the gospel has lived on through the ages. It is alive here in our midst today. You see, the gospel is the seed that originally was covered over by the shadow of the cross. And as Jesus was raised from the dead, that seed was allowed to sprout forth in the wonderful redeeming light of the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus must die. Otherwise, we stay in a state of sin and we have no salvation. Christ in his death becomes the payment for our sins. As Luther states in his small catechism as he explains the second article of the creed concerning our belief in Jesus Christ, Jesus has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has purchased and freed me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil. 
not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. Martin Luther understood the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Yes, Jesus must die, but Jesus does not die in vain. For He died in order that we might share in Him eternal life. This is the wonderful promise that we participate in today and every day as members of the body of the living Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the Holy Supper. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus Christ, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Supper we may know the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread. Here is wine. Here is Jesus. Come and be fed. At this time I would ask you to reverently take the wafer This is the body of Christ, given for you, each ye all of them. And please take the cup. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you, drink ye all of it. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. You are what God has made you to be.
created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. We thank you all for coming out today. If you have any comments or suggestions about what you've experienced here, please uh, call or email the church office and please give me just a minute to get up to the entrance so that I can share some peace with all of you. God bless you and have a good rest of the week.